doesn't really serve any sort of purpose. Don't do what I did. I absolutely butchered them. It just looks so much more modern, so much smarter. I think I did a really good job. This video is sponsored by Roger. In this video, we're going to be doing a little interior mod that doesn't really serve any sort of purpose. It just looks a lot better than what comes in the car as standard. Now, don't get me wrong. I think the interior of these Mark 6s, for their age, actually look pretty good. But there are a few things that I think just look a little bit dated. As you'd expect from a car from, well, this one's 2007, but I mean, these Fiestas date back to, what, 2002, the earliest ones, the pre facelift. So there's always going to be a few little things that you're going to want to update. And one of my favorite things I've done to the car to date was retrimming the headliner and the pillars and everything in that black fabric and then getting the black Mark 7 sun visors, painting all the little plastic bits black and all that sort of stuff. I think that really freshens up the interior. I'll leave a link in the description of that video if you wanted to check it out. But another thing that I think looks a bit dated, well, obviously the radio, maybe we'll get onto that at some point. But the thing that I'm going to be doing today is a little mod to this heater panel. And it's quite a common thing for these Mark 6s. So what we're going to be doing is the Mark 2 Ford Focus heater panel upgrade. Now it's not just a case of a straight swap between the Fiesta panel and this Focus one. In fact, it's more of a kind of mash up between the two. But first we need to get the original heater panel out of the car. I removed the radio using the radio keys, disconnected the wiring harness and the aerial. Behind the radio, there's one screw either side and then there's one that sits underneath it. After these have been removed, I can pop out the coin holder or clock in my case and the heated screen controls. This reveals two more screws which need to be removed in order to get the dash off. Once the dash is loose, you can pull it forward slightly and reveal two more screws on top of the heater panel, but then I decided to remove the dash completely, unplugging all the wires and buttons. With the dash out, I could then get to the back of the heater panel and remove everything. There was one large connector block with a tab to release on the back of the fan speed control, then there was a wire that needed to be unclipped from the back of the temperature control. And then this green piece just unclips from the back of the directional control. Then it's just two push fit clips holding the bottom of it in. And then one final wiring connector for all the LEDs in the panel. And then now this is removed from the car. You can just undo the screws that hold the fascia panel to this back piece. And that can be removed. Um, we'll be back to this bit later. But for now... We need to go and start hacking this apart. One popular little mod for the Focus guys is to replace these horrible original dials that come on the Focus panel with these sort of more modern aftermarket ones. Now, unfortunately, you couldn't get a set of these for the Mark VI panel. I think you can just about modify the left and right ones to accept these, but the middle one, you need one little piece from behind this focus panel, I believe. Seems like an awful lot of work just to be able to fit these onto the Mark VI one, but there are a couple of other bits you can use from the focus panel just to make the Mark VI one look a little bit nicer. So what it is popular to do is to cut each of these little rings from around the dials just with all the little images and obviously the temperature stuff and the fan speed and all that on there. You literally just cut the rings out and then you'll attach those to the back of the fascia panel that's in the car so it sort of replaces the Fiesta ones that come on here. One thing you might notice with the directional controls between the two is that on the Fiesta panel, bottom left, you've got feet heaters. And then on that one, it's towards your face. And then your feet one is actually on the right on the focus panel. And then on the right on the Fiesta panel, it's face. So those are just going to be swapped around, but there's not really anything you can do about that if you are going to use these focus ones. Now, another reason why I want to go for the focus panel over this original Fiesta one is because if you look at this one, I've got hacked up already here between the black plastic on top and the gray plastic on the back. There's a layer of like see through green plastic, which acts as kind of a filter so that whatever color bulb you have behind here, it's just going to shine through with that like horrible green tinge to it. And that's not what we want. So it's time to start tearing these apart. And then I can show you exactly how we're going to do this. Starting with the Fiesta panel, the first thing to do is to remove the controls for the fan speed and the temperature from the back. There's a couple of T20 torque screws that hold these in. And once you've removed these, you can just twist the controls to one side and then pop them out. Then you just need to remove the front panel. There's another T20 torque screw in the back. And once that's removed, four little tabs hold it in. Just pop that out and then we can move on to the focus panel. Now, all we really need from the focus panel is just the rings around the knobs. We do have to cut these out individually because they don't quite line up with the Fiesta ones, but to get them off, first thing you need to do is pop all three of the knobs off the focus panel. Be careful with the middle one because the little pin that it sits on, we actually need this later on. So just be careful when you're yanking these off. 
And then there's just a load of clips that hold on the front face piece to this panel. So just pop all of those out or snap them like I did and then you'll get the front off. And then this little pin in the center of the focus panel is the bit I was talking about earlier. You need to keep this intact because you'll need it later on. So the next thing I needed to do was to start hacking up the focus panel and separate the three rings. As you can see here, I've just put a little bit of masking tape over the faces just to protect them and stop me from scratching anything because that's the bit that we want. Once you've got the three rings separated, the next thing you need to do is just try and make them as thin as possible is the best way I can describe it. You want to get as much material off the back of here so they're, like I said, as thin as you can get them without taking away any of the width because later on you're gonna bond these to the back of the fascia panel that comes on the Fiesta. Okay, so there is all the focus pieces cut out. Not the absolute neatest of jobs, but I think they're gonna work just fine. I know you have to take quite a lot of material off these and I think they should just be small enough to fit in behind the fascia of the Fiesta panel. Next, it's on to hacking up the Fiesta panel. And basically what you wanna do is remove the three original dials to make space for the focus ones. You wanna leave your AC and recirc buttons and I left the rest of the frame around the outside of this panel as well. And I'll explain why a little bit later. You're not gonna get this perfect first go. You are gonna to have to hack this up a little bit more and a bit more and a bit more later on just to make sure you've got the right amount of clearance to get the focus panels in there. But it just takes a little bit of trial and error. Okay, so we've got all the focus pieces out. We've got the Fiesta bezel all sorted. Hopefully I've taken enough off around there to be able to fit these in, but I'll find out for definite once we've got the sort of fascia panel from the Fiesta because I'll have to stick these to the back of that and then that'll go over the top of here. So it depends whereabouts these actually line up as to whether it will fit or whether we'll actually just have to cut off this outer piece. I just kind of left this on here just for a bit of sort of extra rigidity, I suppose. But I've got a feeling that the ones of these you can just buy ready done. I think they just cut them off here and here and don't use any of the top piece. So we might end up having to go down that route, but I'm not sure yet. We will see. But before we go and fit this back together, I want to change the LEDs that are on this little PCB here. So there's these two little rubber pieces that sit like under the buttons so basically these buttons will light up like the ac will light up and this research image here will light up so those i think they're just green as standard like the normal uh leds inside the car but then the two little indication lamps to tell you that they're actually on those are red now i was going to do those red but i found out earlier from looking in the car that they are already red so i don't need to change those so that'll be those top leds so just this little one here would be the indication to say it's on and this one's just sort of well, it would have been green, but I'm going to change those to white because I just want to use white LEDs for most stuff. A, a mixture of white and red is really what I'm going for. But, you know, you'll see that once it's all back together. So let's pop this one off as well. There we go. So that's those two removed. And then this PCB should, should just pop out of here. There's just like a little plug on the back of it which pokes through the housing. So there we go. That's the little PCB out. And I'm just going to be changing this LED here and the same over here, like I said, for white ones. Now I will be doing a full LED conversion on the rest of the interior. So the speedo, the window switches, the light switches, uh, all the little switches on the dashboard, probably the radio as well. I will be getting an aftermarket one, but I'll probably just do an LED conversion on the original radio just to show you how to do it if you wanted to have a go. But for this video, we are just gonna be doing the little LEDs on the recirc and AC buttons, and also there'll be the LEDs that actually go in the back of the panel. So just for reference, that's those LEDs that you can see twist into the back there. They're just a twist fit, so they're nice and easy to replace. And these are the LEDs that I'm about to change now on this PCB. And what I'll do is I'll leave a link in the description for this video for these ones specifically and what they are. As you can see, I've got white ones. So if you look on, well, I'll leave a link to the eBay shop as well where I got these and then you can get whatever color you want, but I'll leave a code so you know exactly what type of LEDs they are. And as you can see, I've got all the other LEDs I'm gonna need for the rest of the conversions. But for this video, like I said, it's just gonna be these ones and these little ones that go in the back of this panel that I just showed you. Now, one thing that it's important to note is that LEDs have a polarity. This should normally be indicated on the LED, on this specific LED, that little notch that you can see cut out of the bottom right-hand corner indicates that's the negative side of the LED. So we wanna put negative to that side and then positive to the other side and the LED lights up. And then if we were to switch those round and put negative to the positive side, positive to the negative side, we get nothing. 
Now what you can see me using here is a flux pen. It's basically just a liquid which helps solder flow a little bit better. Because I worked in electronics for a good number of years and I've done a lot of surface mount soldering, I've just got a few extra little bits that you might not have, but you don't necessarily need them. This is just some solder wick or solder braid. It's basically just like a copper braid and once you heat it up, it draws the solder away from the PCB and into the braid. So I just wanted to remove as much of the original solder as I could to start with. It just makes removing everything a little bit easier. Now normally for removing surface mount components you wouldn't use a soldering iron, you'd use a hot air jet, but I don't have one of those at home so I just wanted to show you that it can be done with an iron. It just might take a little bit longer, just be careful, take your time and eventually you will get that LED to come away from the board. And then when it comes to soldering on new components it's easier to start with clean pads so I just used a little bit of the flux and the solder braid just to clean up those pads, make sure there was no solder on there so we have a nice clean surface to mount our new LEDs to. So then soldering on the new LED is nice and easy. We've got nice clean pads, so I'm just going to put a little bit of flux on there to help the new solder flow. Put a little bit of solder on the tip of my soldering iron. Then I'm just going to hold the LED onto the pads with a pair of tweezers, tack in one side, and then tack in the other. And then we're done. And then just really quickly, I just wanted to show you that it can be done with just a soldering iron and a pair of tweezers. You don't need the flux or the solder braid. I just use them because I have them to hand. Now obviously you guys can see that this video has been sped up a little bit but I promise you I didn't use either of them on this LED. It was a little bit more tricky and it did take me a while to actually get this LED stuck down but eventually I got it tacked in and then after a quick test everything was working fine. Oh and remember to just put these little rubber pieces back on here you don't want to forget about those. Right next up we're going to be moving on to these four LEDs on the back of this panel. Now with these don't do what I did. So they just twist like that to pull out. Now I bought full replacement like bulbs with the holders to twist in, but these don't fit in here so well. They're just not quite the right size. What I didn't realize was that these little gray plastic pieces are literally just bulb holders. And you can just pull the bulbs out of there and you can literally just buy replacements of these LED ones. They're literally just a little T5 bulb. I'll leave a link to the bulbs you actually need to buy for these in the description, and then you'll just plug your new LED bulbs into there, and you can reuse these holders because one of them in particular, this one over here, I know for a fact, with this type, this is way too big, and it won't fit underneath the plastic piece which goes in here if you use one of these. So, yeah, these... No good, don't get these ones. I won't leave a link to these ones. I'll leave a link to the replacement bulbs for these. So you just take these bulbs out, put them in these gray holders and then put the gray holders back in. But I haven't got that option and because it's bank holiday weekend and I wanna get this video out for you Tuesday, I've gone with a different option. I have just popped the bulb out of one of these and I've just soldered it into there. So definitely don't do that. But if you are wondering on the polarity of these, then all you really need to know is on the top here and here is positive. Again, this top bit is the positive and the outside here is positive. And then you've got negative, 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 and then negative on the inside down here. So I had to faff about separating all those bulbs from the holders and then do a load more soldering that I really shouldn't have had to do, but not to worry, I got these all soldered in and then after a quick test, everything was working fine. Right, back onto the focus dials. Why have I got two sets here? Well, as you can see, this bottom set have been butchered up quite a lot more particularly this one, than this top row here. These are the set that I did initially and I absolutely butchered them. I made a complete mess. I was trying to clearance a lot more out of them to get them to fit in behind the bezel there. Like I said, especially this one, like on either side, trying to get it round these two little sort of raised pieces where the AC and the recirc buttons are. But that was the wrong idea. Like what I should have been doing is trying to clearance more out of the bezel that I've kind of left on here. But luckily, Roger Andrew has come to save the day again and brought me another set. So thank you, Roger, again for bailing me out with this one. I honestly think before too long, I'm going to have to start saying this video is sponsored by Roger because he just helps me out so much and I can't thank him enough. So we're going to try and get these into that fascia and fingers crossed, it all lines up. 
Now to see all these focus dials onto the back of the Fiesta fascia, I'm using some JB Weld two-part black adhesive. Originally, I just bought some clear plastic adhesive, but Roger suggested that some of this might show through if the rings still don't quite fit well enough. So we switched over to the black stuff, which he not only recommended me, but also lent me. I started off by just mixing up a small amount of the JB Weld and just putting a couple of little tacks on the back of the Fiesta fascia panel just to hold each of the rings in place, just to check I had them in the right place before fully sealing these in. Then after a quick test fit, everything was lining up really well, so I mixed up a bigger batch of the JB Weld and got these rings fully sealed in. Right, okay, it's the following day and these are all fully cured now, they're properly sealed in here. Now, ready to put everything back together, I did do a couple of test fits, did have a few fitment issues just because of this sort of extra build up now with some of that JB weld on here, especially around the bottom of the two outer dials. So I've had to clearance a little bit more out of this plastic. I've had to take it down quite a bit there and there, as you can see. And I've also had to take down a bit of this plastic on here, but it's just a case of putting it all together, just test fitting it roughly, seeing where it's not quite sitting properly, and then just taking a little bit more out of the Dremel. I didn't want to show you all that, but I'm pretty much ready to reassemble this, and then we can work on getting all the little dials and bits, you know, the mechanical bits that go behind it, and then we can hopefully get it back in the car. So I can now pop this piece back onto here. There's just four little tabs that hold that in. and then it's secured with a T20 torque screw on the back. We can then pop the fascia panel over the top for the final time, and that's fitting perfectly. And then there's just four posi screws that hold the fascia panel to this white panel on the back. And there we go, so that so that piece back together. Okay, so now we're ready to go and start fitting all these controls into the back of the panel. So this is the fan speed control. So what I'm just gonna show you really quickly, you can see the sort of shape on there hopefully, but basically you've got a flat on the top there, and then the rest of it, there's these little like star patterns, and it's the same on the back of this new knob. But these are for a focus. This is obviously off a of Fiesta, like it will fit on here, but that's not the problem we've got. So once I put this into the back, of the panel where it's meant to sit. I don't know if you can see, but the flat spot is basically facing the zero. So if I hold this knob, so the flat spot's facing the zero, our actual indication as to what fan speed we're on is way down here, you know, not in the right place. So we actually need to make a modification to this so that this is gonna point in the right direction. Some people have suggested you can just pop this black piece off of here and then just reposition it once you've got this on, but there is a tiny little notch in the clear plastic underneath so that this cutout fits there specifically. You could grind that down and just re, you know, reattach this wherever you want it, but there is a modification you can make to this so it just fits as is. So basically what we need to do, there you go, you can just about see that pattern on there now. And then just to show you in case it wasn't clear before, you can see the same pattern in the back of this knob but because it doesn't line up what we need to do is this one little spline here to the right of the flat as you look at it sort of straight on we need to cut that off basically making a flat on this side at 90 degrees to this one and then once that is sat on with the flat of this on the new flat that we're going to make that should line up perfectly. So I'm just gonna go and cut that off. I'm not gonna show it here, but I'm just gonna cut that off or grind it down with a Dremel so that's flat. And then I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so hopefully now you can see we've got the original flat spot on the top and then I've just ground down another flat just on the right hand side. So now we can position this knob with our other flat on that side. And then I'll show you once this is in the back of the panel so okay and then as you can see we got zero one two three and four so that lines up perfectly see we can't go any more and it stops on zero so that's exactly where we want that one to be so that's that one sorted and then there's just a little t20 torx which holds this switch in place Next, we can fit the temperature control dial, but as you can see, this is not the same shape as that. It's just not gonna stay on there at all. It'll just spin around it. So what we need to do is, like I mentioned earlier in the video, we need to cut 
this section with the right shape on it off of a piece from the focus panel. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to bond this onto here once we've got it in the right orientation. But first, I'm just going to pop this in. I'm going to cut that off, stick that on the knob. And then once I've got it sort of pointing the right way where I think it needs to sit, then we'll bond that on. So that just pushes in and twists. And then again, there's a little T20 Torx, which screws into the back. Okay, so that's that little piece cut off of here. So this is the bit we want. Now, there is kind of a flat on the inside of it here, which will line up with the flat on there. It's not a very tight fit. Like I will need to bond that on to find some way of strongly attaching that. But with the flat up here and the flat up here, now I've got this set to all the way to cold. And as you can see, the little notch isn't lining up. So with this one, rather than cutting off a flat to the right of the original, if we cut one off to the left of the original, we should be pointing in the right place. So I'm just going to go and put a flat on this side of this piece. And there we go. As you can see, we've got a new flat. So if I line that up, I am just going to test fit this. And as you can see, we are pointing in the right direction. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pack this full of the JB weld, pop it on there, and then just leave it to sit until it's fully cured. So I pressed that little stem cut from the focus dials into the back of our new knob, then packed it full of JB weld, pressed it on to the stud in the Fiesta panel, and then that should set around it and lock it in place. So now that's all in there, I'm just gonna leave that sit until this is fully cured. It does say half an hour, but I'm gonna leave it a little bit longer than that. I'm probably gonna leave it a couple of hours so that that JB weld completely sets around that little like metal pin and then that should hopefully seal that all in there so that when we turn that it's not going to sort of slip around on there so that's those two done like i say i'm just going to leave it for a couple of hours and then we'll come back to it right okay so that should now be fully set in place i'm not going to play with it just yet i'm just going to give it as long as i possibly can just to make sure that it's firmly set and that is not going to spin on there so we've got two of them done so now there's just one more to do which is this one. So this is what we're going to have in the car. Now this has a long metal cable attached to it normally, but this is just a spare one that's been cut off that Roger gave me again. But uh, basically you have to do the same sort of thing with this one as we did with that one. So you've got the flat on the top there and you want to cut a flat off on, on the right hand side of it. So, so like this spline here, you'd want to cut that off, but you've got to cut it off on the one that's in the car. Like I can't use this. This is just for reference because it's going to be hard to show you in the car. So what I'm going to go and do is I'm just going to go to the one in the car. I'm going to take off just this spline on the right hand side. And then once that's in there, again, our last dial, as we've got here, should be pointing in the right direction. So there you go. You can just see that I filed down the one side of that. And now that accepts our focus knob and that was the last little piece and so now everything can just go back together the same way that it came out of the car a couple of the little connections at the back can be quite tricky but once you've got all those in you can finally push the heater panel in and screw it in pop in the final knob then reassemble the rest of the dash and the radio and in typical fashion all the storage on my camera filled up and i couldn't actually film the last little bit of me putting the dash back together but if you manage to get it out i'm sure you can get all that stuff back in but Let's show you the heater panel. And there we go. That is how it is looking. And I think it is looking so good. It just looks so much more modern, so much smarter. And you know what? I think I've done a really good job. Like it all looks really neat and tidy. Everything seems to line up. As you can see, all of those line up. And I have checked that these are pointing in the right directions. The only ones that will give you a problem, well, not a problem, but basically on the fiesta that's feet and that's face but on the focus ones we've got feet this side and face that side so if you want it on your face you actually put it to feet and obviously the same the other way around but other than that i think this is just looking so good now i'm so happy with the way that's come out and you know what let's actually just flick the lights on unfortunately there is quite a bit of glare from the bulbs on the camera but in person 
Like it does just look so good. So I'm really, really happy with this upgrade. That being said, I can totally appreciate why the companies that actually make these panels for you to buy charge the prices that they do because it is actually very difficult to do. Like I did struggle a lot and I couldn't have done it without some help. So I do want to say a massive thank you once again to Roger who helped me out massively with this as he has with quite a lot of other things that I've done to this car, but he provided me with the spare panels to do this conversion. He brought me over a spare set of the focus dials after I messed mine up. He knew exactly which LEDs I needed and gave me a list of everything I'll need for not only this conversion, but also doing the rest of the clocks and the dashboard as well. Now, Roger does actually do LED conversions for the clocks, the speedo, the dash, even the radio and all that sort of good stuff. So definitely go and check him out. I'll leave a link to his Facebook if you want to get any of these conversions done and you don't fancy having a go at it yourself like I have. But that being said, I think I did a really good job of this. And if you think so too, then I really appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. But for this video, it is time to end so thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time